Whoa, we come down fast. With all those scooters littering the streets, I'm sure you've at the very least been tempted to go ride one. But then when you find one, guess what? The battery just happens to be dead and you can't use it. And by off chance that you do find one that has a charged battery, guess what? You have to pay to unlock it, pay a lot of money out of your pocket to ride it every minute. And by the time you're done riding it, you realize you racked up a bill that could have been used for much better purposes. So wouldn't it be great if you could have your own scooter at a fraction of the price it would cost you to ride one of those scooters on the street a few times? And the bonus part is you always have it with you and it's always ready to go and you can take it wherever you want. That means no more hunting down scooters on the app looking for them and hoping that they work when you find them. So today we're looking at the Mega Wheels S10 BK electric scooter. It doesn't have a super fancy box or anything, but the scooter itself is definitely worth the cost of admission and does pack a punch. It contains a 7.5 amp hour battery that allows you to get 14 miles of range out of it and it supports a rider up to 265 pounds. The scooter has two 8 inch wheels in the front it has a honeycomb wheel and in the back it has a solid wheel so that way you can have a nice smooth ride on any terrain. Although I wouldn't go riding this out in the water or anything but you know if you happen to hit some rocks or something you should be good to go. So just like every other electric scooter on the market it does have a bright LED headlight so you can ride this thing at night safely but this one actually has a couple things that I haven't seen on any other scooters including the ones you rent on the street. First things first it has an electronic brake instead of one of the brake handles so just like you flip a switch to accelerate you flip the other switch on the opposite side to slow down and when you use that electronic brake it lights up an LED brake light in the back so people know that you're stopping which is actually very cool and very safe. Now in case you're a beginner and never rode a scooter in your entire life or at least an electric one this actually has three different speed modes so that way you can get ready to go without going at the max speed and you know, crash and hitting your head or something. It allows you to limit the speed to about six miles per hour, 12 and a half miles per hour, or a full 15 miles per hour if you wanna be a speed demon and get to places as fast as possible because you're a professional and you've rode these things your entire life. And because this is a scooter that you own, it does have a couple other features that's gonna make this better than the ones that you find on the street. The first one is because you're not gonna be able to just leave this wherever you want when you're done with it, you're gonna have to take it with you everywhere you go. So it actually folds down in half so you can actually carry it and take it wherever you need to be. And then the other feature, which is obviously not a feature of the rentable ones, is that if the battery happens to die, instead of having to carry it around, you can actually kick ride it just like a regular manual scooter so that way you still get to ride it and it's still better than walking and carrying a heavy scooter. So now I'm sure you're just just as excited as I am to get into this thing because I mean scooters especially electric ones they're a fun time shout out to riddle mm, I can smell the nice rubber tires inside oh wow This scooter is nice. Inside the box, we do have a user manual to get you started. The left handlebar with some nice grips. The right handlebar also with nice grips. Each handlebar does include a ring, so make sure you don't lose this. A pack of various sized Allen wrenches, as well as the charging cable so you can keep this thing juiced up. So now looking at this thing, it's a lot bigger and beefier than I was expecting, and I didn't notice it actually has the front honeycomb wheel right here. Remember, eight inches of glory, and we have to actually put that thing on. I mean, this is a really solid, although not solid, honeycomb wheel. All right, so it looks like to get the front wheel installed, we have to get this base off. It actually says we have to step on it, so it looks like I actually have to. Okay, this thing's actually zip-tied on here, and I'm having trouble removing it. It said to just step on it, but it's like locked on. I'm sure I can just cut it off. It's in one of those things where I'm like, I don't even know why this is on here. And if it is, why is it so hard to get off? That was a lot harder than it should have been. But we got it off. Next, we have to remove these rubber plugs that are on both sides. Okay, see something else. I guess we're gonna probably need those though. And we have to use the two big included Allen wrenches to remove the peg. So when you're installing this wheel, you wanna make sure the tread is basically, you see how it looks like some arrows? You want it to face forward so it rolls this way. So just pay close attention to that to get the best results here. This is probably easier if you have some help from somebody. <laughs> but it's definitely doable by yourself if you have to, like me. I'm gonna get it nice and tight. Obviously not too tight, don't strip the bolt, but you don't want the wheel falling off either. And we're golden. Make sure the wheel spins, the wheel spins. Not wobbly whatsoever, we're good to go. Next we're gonna get those rubber plugs we took out, put them back into place. There we go, get it nice and even. Now as you can see, with the wheel installed, the scooter doesn't just stand up on its own, but we got this little kickstand here. Problem solved, smart. Next step is to unfold it, so with one hand you're gonna press down on the fender, 
lift up with their other hand. Once you get it up here, you're gonna take the safety latch and push it into place. And as you can see, now it's nice and steady and isn't going anywhere. Very nice. Now, if you wanna refold it, you're gonna have to push this up with your finger, pull this back. It's actually really tight. <clears throat> Definitely safe. Then you can fold it back down, lock it back into the fender, and carry it when you wanna walk around. So we're gonna actually have to get this put back up. <laughs> That's just a satisfying click right there. Let me just put this down on the floor. And now we're gonna actually get the handlebars installed. So each one's labeled left and right. So we're gonna start off with the left one. Make sure we get our little washer. We're gonna put it around here. And then all we have to do is basically twist it into place. Get it nice and tight. Same thing with the right side, just twist it in. And we're good to go. Now, as far as the scooter goes, it has a very nice design. Definitely looks like it costs a lot more than it actually does. I'm really liking the overall appearance. Although there are some quality issues. For example, if you take a look at the wood here, there are a couple imperfections, which I'm not really liking and I wish that wasn't there. Although to be fair, it's not gonna hinder use whatsoever and you'll probably damage it on your own anyways. But you know, if you buy something brand new, you want it to look brand new, not like it was used before. Now, as far as controlling the actual scooter, over here on the left side, we have the electronic brake. You're gonna gradually push this down so it can gradually come to a stop. And then back here, we actually have the fender, which you can step on to have a manual brake. But for the most part, you're gonna be using the electronic brake to gradually come to a stop. And make sure you're careful the first few times it uses so you can get used to how fast it stops. Now, over here on the right side, we actually have the accelerator switch. So you're gonna gradually push this down to go faster, all the way down to go to max maximum speed. Slowly let it come back up if you want to slow down. You know, simple, just like a car. Now over here in the middle is where things get interesting. We have the LED display that's going to let you know exactly what's going on with the scooter. The display is right above two buttons. On the left side we have the power button as well as the headlight button, and on the right side we have the speed button. So we're going to hold down the power button for about two seconds to power it on. It beeps, the screen lights up, and we're ready to ride. As you can see, it's defaulted to kilometer per hour, but since I'm in the United States, I'm going to triple tap the power button to switch to miles per hour. So now I know how fast I'm actually going. Right underneath of the speed, we have the battery indicator, zero to 25%, 25 to 50, 50 to 75, and 75 to 100. And right under that, we actually have a headlight indicator. So you're gonna double tap the power button to turn on the headlights. And as you can see, the three headlights are on, as well as the back tail light. And if you happen to not be riding at night, you double tap the button, turns off the headlight and the tail lights once again. And the cool thing about the tail light and brake light is no matter if the lights are on or off, once you flip the electronic switch for the brake, it actually lights up full brightness to let people know that you're stopping. Very cool, and I'm really liking that feature. Now, as far as the speed goes, we have the circle with the S in it. When it's white, we're in low mode, so it's gonna max out at six miles per hour for beginners. Tap the mode button once to go to orange mode, which is gonna let you go about 12 miles per hour, and then tap it a second time to go to red mode, which is gonna let you max out the speed at about 15 miles per hour. It's very easy to control with the tap of a button. Very fluid, very clicky, I like it. And then when you wanna charge up your scooter, underneath right next to the kickstand is actually where we have a rubber cover that covers up the charge port so you can get the juice flowing. Every time you go out to ride, you're gonna to wanna to make sure this is sealed to avoid any water getting inside. So really overall, I'm really liking this scooter and I'm gonna go take this for a ride, test it out and let you guys know if it's any good and if it's worth your money. And I can't wait! I love electric scooters. What is today but the perfect kind of weather to go out for a ride with our nice new scooter? So I got it right here. Let me just unfold this thing, lock it into place. Mm. Now I'm ready to hit the trails or the road, whatever. I'm ready to hit whatever. Even outside during the day, the display is surprisingly visible. Oh yeah, this thing picks up speed fast. Woo. Oh shoot, slow down a little bit. Let me turn around. Whoa, going through some dirt right here. Oh yeah, this thing feels nice. I am noticing a bit of a rattle though as I hit these bumps and cracks in the road. So that's a little bit weird. I mean, everything's put together right, but something's making a little bit of a rattle. I'd prefer if it was quiet. Now the motor itself is very quiet, so I really like that. It picks up speed and you just hear like a little bit of a whine. Just hit a really big crack and went over it just fine. It handles very well. Rides really smooth, even over all these really bad roads I'm riding on right now. I like it. Oh yeah, we're going really fast. 
really smooth, maxing out. Oh gosh. A bit scary, but the brake is very responsive and works very well to bring this down to a slow stop. Although don't hit it too hard because you will go flying. Trust me, you got to ease into the brake because it is very responsive. And I really like the way this thing drives. Nice. Now something I'm always afraid to do with electronic scooters, hoverboards, and I guess just anything on wheels is go down a steep decline like this. So why not try it? Let's go. Whoa. <laughs> I didn't even have to hit the throttle. It just took over, you know, gravity happened and it just started rolling. The brake worked to slow me down, but wow, that was scary. Now my question is, can I actually go up this steep incline? Let's find out. I mean, this incline is pretty steep. Let me get a little bit of a head start and let's go. It's slowing down. It's going slow. Oh, but we actually made it up. Very nice. I did not expect that to actually work because it started slowing down, but it did eventually make it up. Now let's go back down. Gravity's happening. <laughs> this is scary. But at least once you know how to control it, you could do stuff like that. Let's so be careful. Oh yeah, I just came down that decline right there, making my way down this long road. Speeding, max out at 15 miles per hour right now. <laughs> Make sure you watch where you're going. Oh yeah, this is a blast. Woo, took that turn like a pro. And of course, you can even go for a ride at night. Oh yeah, it's working fine. Feels good without the sun beating down on my head. Nice. Nice cold wind right here. Let me turn around. Now what I am noticing is the headlight is barely illuminating anything. Like I can't even see it in these shadows right here. Oh no, I just came to a full stop. And I keep going, I push it up. All right, so here we go. But the headlight, it's kind of useless at night. I mean, people could see me coming, but I can't see anything in front of me. Nothing on the ground, everything's just dark. So that kind of sucks. Although the tail light and brake light, Definitely comes in handy when people are coming after me. Like right now, I almost just got hit. But as you can see, it works like a charm at night, but you might want to bring your own light. Whew, I am back y'all. And I got the verdict for you after riding during the day and at night. I'm gonna tell you if this is worth your hard earned money. And long story short, I definitely recommend picking up this scooter. It's definitely worth the money because it is a total blast to ride and definitely beats wasting your money on the ones on the street that you have to hunt down to find. Now, with that being said, it's not without its issues and I'm gonna get into that right away, right now. So really, for the most part, I only have one actual issue and I feel like I could actually fix it possibly. I'm not sure if I should do it, but I think I can. If you take a close look right here by the front wheel, there's a couple of metal pieces here that are just a little bit loose. And I feel like I can tighten these up, although I'm not sure if they're supposed to be loose like that so you can fold it or what's going on here. But when you ride it, if you hit any bumps or any cracks in the sidewalk or the road, that's what you're hearing. And it gets very annoying. I'm like, okay, I feel like the wheel's gonna fall off. But I know I put the wheel on there all the way. So I was like, okay, I guess it's this. And I just don't like the way that sounds. I feel like I could tighten this up with a little screwdriver or something. And this one right here actually uses the Allen wrench it came with, although I need another one for the other side in order to tighten it. But other than that, there's only one more thing that I feel like could be a tad bit better, and that's the headlight. We have three LED lights in the front to light up the night. Although, even though all three of them are on at max brightness, they're basically useless unless you're in like a completely pitch black dark environment and even then you can barely see them. Now they're good if you want other people to see you coming but if you're riding this at night and you're hoping that this is going to illuminate the view in front of you and the road so you can avoid obstacles, 
you're out of luck because it barely lit up anything. So you're gonna wanna bring a flashlight with you or something, maybe one that you put on your forehead, I don't know. But other than those two issues so far, this thing is amazing. I mean, it's got some weight to it. It feels very strong, very sturdy, very high quality. It feels good when you ride it. The motor is actually really quiet. I'm impressed with that. It picks up speed very fast. It rides very smoothly. Now, one of the things that I really like about it, but also I'm giving you a warning right now, the electronic brake. It really brings you to a stop and it works very well. And I especially like that it lights up the brake light in the back so people know that you're coming to a stop. But you need to be careful because when I was riding it, if you hit it all the way down, you're gonna go flying. Trust me, you're gonna face plant and you're not gonna have a good time. So you're gonna wanna gradually do it. So like I was saying, when it's your first time riding it, use the slow speed and practice using that brake because it is very strong, which is good, but it's also very dangerous if you hit it too hard. I mean, overall, this is like the best bang for your buck that you can think of if you want an electric scooter. I mean, the price is right. It feels like it costs a lot more than it actually does. Handlebars have some very nice grip. There's a big spot here to plant your feet and it rides very smooth and very quietly other than, you know, that metal piece, which I feel like can be tightened, although I wanna make sure before I actually do it because I don't wanna mess things up, you feel me? But wow, this is a blast right here. I'm surprised it's so cheap. It goes fast, it feels good. You feel the wind in your face. Like this definitely beats trying to find one on the street because you always have this with you. Just make sure you have it charged up. You can take it wherever you want and always have it ready to go when you wanna go. I definitely recommend picking this up. If you have one yourself, let me know what you guys think of it. Let me know if you're having a blast not having to go find them on the street and having your own and everyone's jealous because they're like, yo, I'm spending like $40 an hour. You got this and you get to just ride it for free? Sounds like the smart thing to do. I know, trust me. Seriously, other than those very few quirks I have about it, it's a very solid scooter and you should definitely pick one up. Okay.